Okay, so there we go. That's the underside done, as you can see. Patchy and everything else. So, we flip this over again to our top side. Okay, now the top side, we want it to be a little bit more uh, grimy, I suppose. Now, I know what we're saying because we said about space, it's different, all the rest of it. It's purely from a shadow point of view, because we've got structure all up here on the top, it's naturally gonna make things darker. So we're just trying to accentuate that a little bit. So by up here, we're keeping it a little bit more grimy, dirtier than the underside, because the underside, obviously, there's nothing really there. It's just one big flat-ish area. So anyway, what we want to do now is just blend all this down. And what it'll do, it'll enable us to lighten everything just a little bit, because when we come in with washes and inks and grimes and things like that to really bring this to life, uh, it'll then knock it back a bit. So if it was too dark, it'll go too dark all the way over. So by deliberately keeping it a little bit light, it should get around this problem. So what we've got down in here is probably 75% thinners to 25% paint. It's a very wet mix, as I call it. You can always tell, if you look at your brush, when you put it in your thinners and you just stand it up, if you can see all the bristles, no problem at all, then you know you're about right, okay? Now I know this isn't an exact science and everything else, and I know I teach people never to trust mixes and ratios, but that is a word of thumb. If you put it through and then you just stand it, let it drip down, you should see all your bristles of your brush come through. It means it's pretty thin and it's not covering particularly well. It's certainly not thick enough to, to cover the bristles. So, check our flow. Maximum air pressure for this, okay? So all we're gonna do is spraying on a complete coat over everything. Now we are keeping it somewhat random because obviously we're sweeping it from side to side, but we're trying to blend it all together because what this will do, because it's quite wet, it will melt in the top ones and everything else, but you're trying to go everywhere with it because it will give it a muted, same tone to everything. So if I just click on extractors as we do this, With all the extractors running, obviously it draws it all out of the way. Without it, it causes us a few headaches. So just making sure we go up the back, everywhere. Making sure we do this edge, because it's quite important that this lower edge of it is bleached as well. So we're just going to go down in there. Because all we're doing, hopefully, you're doing here is just thin it all completely down and it just knocks it all to the similar level. You're not trying to change the world with this one, you're literally just trying to sunk it all back down. We just pop these lids on those extractors extract for a moment we can have a look to see what we've got down here and hopefully you can see oh, good daylight behind us uh, shooting this in the morning um, but as you can see it gives us from the overhead that very nice sort of heavy type look to it hopefully you can see from here it's given us exactly what we're after even from the rear and everything else so it just sort of breaks it up now now technically that's good enough with a wash on it certainly to use as is but from our point of view what we want to do is give it even more depth even more detail and an easy way of doing that is to mask up and put in certain areas so from our point of view we've got various obviously plating and details down here we can mask them up and using the blue hues to darken to put them all in just to break it all up and make it certainly a lot more sort of three-dimensional a lot more as if there's more going on with it it's, it's pretty busy on this all over but certainly from our point of view we want to really bring it out to life and when you look at the genuine thing 
it has got them. The only thing that's slightly different, they've put these panel markings straddling over panel lines, okay? Now, I'm not sure how much trouble I'll get out to put these up. There's a couple of photos here uh, that I'm using for references that show them quite clearly not following panels. They are actually individuals over the top. I don't know if that actually works. From my personal taste, I wouldn't do it, but from the point of authenticity, I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing. But what we're gonna do first, let that top coat dry off, okay? It's dry to the touch right now, but I wanna leave it for around about half an hour, totally dry off, because I don't wanna put any masking tapes down and peel them off and take them with it. But what we can do then is get all the masking tape out, and go right the way through it, step by step, and put all these little details back in. Okay, so with the blotchiness all done, as you can see over on the overhead, looking pretty much what we would expect, I think, a Star Destroyer to look at. Certainly looking at the film stills, things like that, we're pretty much on a par with it. Obviously, we've got some details to add to this one. Um, one of the things where uh, is different depending on what version you watch, certainly, um, and different angles and things like that, is this type of plating effect. Now, I call it plating, because I can't think of a better word, to be honest. But it's this thing about, um, obviously, we've got a mosaic down here of panelling, which we're assuming is basically like armoured plating, things like that over the ship, or obviously, sections of okay so all this lot down here we're talking about now would it be a universal color all the way over um and this is where it harps back obviously we're talking sci-fi so there's no rights and wrongs with this it's purely how you want it to be but looking at the originals sometimes you look down and they have quite swathes of it seem to be different shades and colors which i can go with uh, other times they're universal so they're very small little like the panels as we see them all on here other times, quite oddly, especially if you look at clips, certainly from where the uh, the blockade runner is drawn up by the tractor beam and goes up into the cargo bay underneath, you can actually see it looks like they've painted uh, like darker greys, uh, blue greys in squares, but it's not a panel, it's over the corners of four panels and things like that. So it's a little bit odd how it all works, okay? But the thing is, I don't think there's any real right and wrong to this one. I'm not saying, you know, I'm a Star Wars, you know, hardline fanatic and it has to be like this. So what I'm trying to do is go with what I feel would be the right sort of interpretation for it. So what I've elected to do is what I'm calling paneling or plating, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm picking out these squares and giving them a couple of tonal changes, if you like. So as you imagine, if you were doing uh, a normal World War II aircraft, something else like that, it's quite faded down, then we're talking about, obviously, you know, you'd have your camo works, and in amongst that camo works, you would lighten up and darken various panels in it to make them look like they're at different starts of wear and tear, doing exactly the same thing here. So actually what we're doing, pretty much a very long, very laborious job. So if we just pick out um, a couple of little areas here, so what I look for is a panel which will give me the most sort of bang for the buck. Okay, so we've got this one here because it's laying on another area. Now what I've got here is some, I think this is the uh, 18 mil tape, okay? So we're just picking it out here. And to be honest, I've already done a little bit of work which I'll show you a little bit later on. And I'm finding this is just the quickest way to use this because you can get away with using it around about three or four times before you have to ditch the tape. So we're just coming along okay popping it down now knocked up in the color cup here we've got a slightly darker version of what we've got down here already we'll just check our flow okay and then all we're going to do is spray this on and just make sure you're dry putting it down don't make it wet because otherwise it's going to get underneath and also if it's wet it's going to go down the lines that you can see and it's going to track off and you're going to kill your your moment but if you put it on dry it down Okay, let's go back here. And if we just peel this one off quite carefully, hopefully you can see we have a new panel color, okay? And the thing is, I only wanna be a few shades away from the original. I don't wanna be, you know, literally so we're changing it completely and having really dark and things like that. But we're just gonna pop around and literally pick out quite nice areas. So I'm sort of doing the bigger ones, if you know what I mean, rather than the little ones. So we're just going to come along here, for instance. We're going to pop one up here. Okay. And as I said, you just want to do the ones which are going to be most effective. 
Also remember, I'm going to do this in two other colours, okay, which we're going to darken and lighten as we go, which we'll show you. All right, so we can just pop this little guy down in here. Okay. <clears throat> Come along. And just make sure you go right away to the outside, because if you don't go to right to the edges, you're going to have fade off. And fade off is particularly painful, because it just looks like you haven't painted it properly. Okay, now we'll take this one away. And as you can see, we've got two down here. But what I want to do is, I want to put roughly a third of them in, like this. So we're going to pop around, I'm going to put in quite a few of these all the way over in this shade. Then we're going to darken it by adding a touch of grey, and then we're going to do repeat and go right the way over. Then we're going to pick out what I call some key areas where looking off of uh, stills from the film, you can see it had them in these key locations and we'll put those in as well, just so the Doha guys can see you've sort of paid attention to how it's going. But what we're going to do is do these, each different ones, everywhere. Now, obviously, you've just seen me do one at a time. I'm not going to do them all like that. I'm going to put three or four down, spray them, then pull them apart. Using this tape, like we've used it twice now, you can probably get away with using it around about sort of three or four times. And then all we're going to do is then come along, we'll pick another one, like this guy down here. Okay. And then just down here. And then what we'll do, we'll grab some more tape and we'll do a few more squares around. And away we go. But what you want to do is keep it random. So obviously we don't want to be sort of in a pattern because like all weathering, we want it to be very much sort of, you know, like nature, you know, just make it very random, very sort of different all over it and never mirror an image. So, you know, obviously on this side, you don't want to do this panel because this one's a mirror image of this side, okay? So we're not going to do that, okay? So we'll just pick out and we'll perhaps go one forward on it, things like that, just to keep them all totally different all the way over. So it's quite a long old job this, and it's going to take many, many hours to get this all sorted. So I'm going to go around now, put all these down, get it all down, and you can join me for the color change. Okay, so there we go. We are pretty much, probably see on the overhead, got that nice paneling work all the way over. Okay, as I said, it's real artistic license to this. Um, it's not real, uh, it's from a film, there's various variables all the way through. So really, this is where you can just go for your life, okay? It depends, do you wanna have plating all over it? Do you want them to be very stark in contrast? Do you want them to be one or the other? You could even put colors on them if you wanted to or anything else like that. But really, I'm to this stage using two colors. We've got two colors down here. You might be able to see, a, it's. A, not a massive difference in shade, but I think it's enough to actually do it. But what you might be able to see is that we've got some down here, for instance, these are quite dark. We've got these other ones like this one here. It's quite light and everything else. And it purely is, you know, artistic license of exactly what you want to have done. So we've got two colors down pretty normal. But what we want to do now is put down another color, really just to sort of, you know, blend them all together. So it's going to be something between what we've got here, these darker ones and the lighter one. So what we're going to do is take our colour as we did before, if we can find the airbrush. Because to be honest, we've had a good clean out of it because it got very sort of sticky and gooey purely because the amount of time it was going on with it. So what we're going to use here is this, uh, if we can find it, where is it? There we go. Is this um, XF66, but we're going to lighten it. Now, as you can probably see, it's quite a dark gray but it's more of a blue hue when you look at these although they've got a little bit of a blue hue to them this one's got a proper blue to it and when you look at stills of the underside it's got quite sharp blue so we're going to use this in its sole form okay using it neat for very strong colored areas and then we're going to lighten it uh, and have it for other areas but because of this one's going to be quite large bits we're going to do it so what we're going to do is thinners goes in first we're not going to need tons of this Okay, so we've got a bit of thinners in there, a bit of this goes in. So we're just trying to get to a sort of a 50-50 a mix. But this colour, uh, XF66, I really do like it. Now, we want a bit of the white, where's the one we've got open? Which I think is this one. Okay, so what we're going to do. Taking a drop of white, just down in the colour cut. And we want it to come out quite pale. So what we're going to do, we'll shoot it down here so we can see, because we've got, see down here, I've got our original dark colour, now our lighter colour, and then hopefully this one as well will give us our nice contrast between them all. So make sure it gets a good old mix. And then we can 
get in there to see what we've got. Okay, so let's try this. So we're looking for a, a color, pretty much what we've got here. So you might be able to see down here, it's quite a lighter, a blue, gray type of shade. Quite happy with that, get that all the way through. To be honest, the airbrush is struggling just a little because it's uh, thick. Now, we've already got almost gone through a whole roll of tape, as you can see. So what we're going to do, I'll just pick out one to show you. So if we just come in here, quite a, a large one here. What I'm going to do is, though these ones here, I've sort of done a bit of a mishmash, big and small. These, This particular colour here, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to use it on quite large areas. And then we'll come in... Uh, and use the original color of it, that real strong blue color. It seems to be when you look at it that it is just the smaller type areas that seem to be no right or reason. It's not following a panel, it's like on a corner perhaps or something else. It looks like some type of touching work really. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just kind of come in with this guy. I'm gonna put him on, make sure he's all over. Gonna dry him down. And as I say, we're gonna pick out some large areas. So I might do this large one up here. Okay, I might pick out some big stuff in the middle and obviously picking around here, but it's gonna be the sort of larger panels. So if we just whip this guy off so we can see, as you can see now, we've got this other color. You can see on the overhead, which gives us this sort of, I don't know, it's more like a, a bluey type of shade to it. I'm gonna see how it dries back. I'm hoping it's gonna dry back just a little bit lighter, but you can probably see we've gone through a roll and quite a lot of tape uh, to get us to this stage, okay? But I'm gonna see what that goes like. It might be a little too blue. I don't, it looks very much like a sky blue down here. On camera, looking at the overhead, doesn't look too bad, but certainly down here, I don't know, it just looks a bit sort of sky bluey. I might just knock it back a little bit more white into there and we'll try it again. So what we do, if we just pick a, another area where we want, now we want somewhere, say the larger type panels. So let's pick this guy just down here. If you notice it always rolls to one side, that's purely because of our power system. If you remember we got the power pack brick in there, well obviously that's on that side, so it's always trying to roll over, okay? The other thing as well, when you're masking, doing work like this, always allow a little bit of time for it to dry off. That way you can mask over the top right next to, so forth and so on, okay? So as this is drying, I'm actually quite liking the color. I just wanna make it just a fraction lighter than it actually is, okay? So we just do that and I just wanna nick the corner of this off. So we don't need much there. Okay, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I say the overhead, you've got it quite nice up there. That's probably about what color we've got here. Just want to take it just a couple of shades lighter. Now there is something we're going to do, uh, which we've spoken about, where we're gonna just sort of generally fade in and everything. Uh, and that's gonna be with our last color. And what it's gonna do, hopefully it'll work well. When it gets a wash, it should all come to, together then. On the side. Okay, usual thing, we need to blow it all through to be able to get to it. So we're just going to dump that colour cut. That's it coming through, okay. So again, that's more like it, that's more the colour we want. But I'm going to leave that one because I quite like it. Okay, so we're just going to knock that off. back. Okay, then if we see what we've got, hopefully, there we go, that will come back a lot lighter. You can see it's a lighter shade across the mall. Okay, that one's a little bit dark. I want it to be slightly lighter because what we're going to do, we're going to bleach right the way over this and it will just add us to that effect of exactly what we want. Okay, so there we go. That's that bit on there. Really happy with how that is now. So next up, we can actually then go around it or put those little dark spots in, which I'll show you. Then we can get the flat coat on. Okay, and then we can give it a wash over flat, which will give us that nice grimy look to it and exactly want that faded down and distressed look. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have got, on the overhead here, 
completely done all that panelling it's all dry now so you get a better idea of how it all is and as you can see hopefully you can see it gives us exactly that type of effect that we're after and it just sort of blends it all in flip to the underside you can see it under here as well you know so we've got a nice patching going on underneath and taking care of a few little gaps and joins now a few things we have done you might be able to notice at the front here we've actually done we're going to one of these cameras the nose section is all completely in now it's a bit tricky to show you um, on the angle so let's try around here you might be able to see but this nose area up here it has like a sensor system in there that's completely been put in and done now the next major thing is to work on these upper areas up here so you might be able to see this one is done we've also painted this is the radar uh, at the top here that is done as well painted in but this guy here hopefully you can see him as you can see with all this photo etch so we've put all of that on the outside it's what we've done to this guy over here and it's really brought it all to life and these only fit in one way because they're at a slight slant okay and then they go in obviously i need to paint that one up and then that one's painted in there at the same time We've also done these guys, which are these are the guns that fit in here. Now I've done them a slightly different shade to the rest of it. They're not sort of maneuverable or anything else, but it just makes them stand out. I haven't put them on because obviously we're going to dry brush this, so I don't want to knock them off. And obviously they are very, very fragile. And luckily you do get a few spares. And speaking of other things here, this little tiny guy just here is actually a Imperial shuttle of the same scale that this guy is. So gives you an idea of exactly how big he is. Let's sit him on there. That's the scale it is. And I've built one of those and it's quite this big years ago. But anyway, that's those areas done. So we've still got the claw uh, for down underneath and we've got here, which are the two small tractor beams. And these are the last of the small parts to go on there. So they need to be painted as well we'll get this guy painted up and put that one on and what we're going to do is actually fix them in now because i'm going to be very wary about touching the top area okay um, but they you could lose put them in as a, a loose fit because they're quite tight as you can see but just make sure you get them the right way around because they do sort of lean out and they sort of lean in a little bit to allow for this sort of curve so they do need to be correct and put them all in there so once they're on what we're going to do then is come back and we're just going to have a bit of a clear up and we're going to put in these little tiny dark areas which we're going to use uh, xf54 neat and just put them in as is on the real thing so have a look in but that is really taking care of all the build parts of this we've got nothing left now in our bag of bits the photo etch is all taken care of and it's clean and all those areas are done so we're looking really really nice so what we're going to do is just get this guy painted airbrushed up stay base color so it's xf19 uh, right the way over it to put that in okay and we're just going to paint up uh, these claw again XF19 on this one and these radars although we'll put them on underneath all right so then what we can actually do get this last bit of painting work done put those bits on and then we can get the clear coat on okay so we're going around and we're putting in all these little details so what we've done we've gone along and picked out all the raised ones straight forward straight from the bottle XF54 now I'm not doing every one but we're picking out every now and then some of these more square lumps that are raised because it's quite easy to be able to paint them obviously when they're raised uh, as you work your way around so it's very long very laborious picking out all the details as you go around but some of them it just adds a little bit of depth another layer to the paintwork and everything else like that as you're making your way round so we just pick a few more around this area here these ones here to be honest are very soft the others are a lot sharper and obviously when they're sharper and more raised they're a lot more easy to do so we just do a few more here okay and this brings us to the end of technically the painting phase if i just do this one right here okay so that is those whipped around absolutely everywhere out of the way so hopefully on the old overhead you can see now we've got them in now it it looks quite strong on the overhead as i'm looking at it over here but obviously when this has a wash on it the panel line is going to go darker it'll darken everything down and we should be all good to go now I'll be quite careful how we do this but you can probably see the underside it's a lot more busy because we picked out all these lumps and bumps and everything else and there's lots of them under here just to liven it all up 
and everything else like that. A couple of other areas, obviously, looking the part now. This top is in, these are installed. They're not glued, they're a soft fit. We'll say soft fit, they're pretty nasty to get in, take a lot of push in. But once they're in, they're in. Same with the radar on the top, so I can take them off if we need to actually go around for any particular reason, i.e. transportation, easily onto its roof or whatever. Okay, but that finishes up the paintwork phase, excuse the compressor, the paintwork phase of this actual set. So really happy how it's all gone. It's all gone really, really well and everything else. So now what we need to do is give this a complete um, gloss coat, or in my case, I'm gonna go with a satin coat because I want it to have a little bit of texture he says, touching it somewhere it isn't wet, uh, on the actual paintwork itself. So that way, when we come along with a wash, it'll grime it down again, and it'll give it a grimy look. Because what we're actually gonna use is a bit of a mix between the, uh, probably the gray wash, okay, mixed with a very small amount of something like um, the grime, perhaps, or something else like that. Because what I don't want it to do is to be like black lines absolutely everywhere. But I think really using something like, as you say, this gray wash, it should give us that sort of nice definition of in there. And any of these panel lines, which are in some areas, they look too heavy. In other areas, they're quite soft. It should give us that nice sort of universal effect all over these. So we're just gonna let that dry. I'm gonna give it a complete um, uh, satin coat top and bottom so obviously we have to do it in two halves for placing it down so we'll start by doing the underside first get that done that way we can sit it down on the top and then we're going to leave it for 24 hours to totally dry off and everything else like that so then when we do come back with the wash we can put it on and know we're going to be able to get it off quite safely and everything else like that okay so in here what we've got is some standard um, satin this is the Vallejo satin finish right the way over obviously big old job spraying for this so we've got everything on and all we're going to do is layer this gently up Just putting down a, a dusty old coat to start with. Okay, and then we're just going to come in a little bit more heavy to literally build up a nice thick heavy duty coat on this one. Because we've got lots of raised textures and stuff like that, when we're rubbing off the wash we don't want to end up actually rubbing surfaces off. So this is a nice protective coat that will go around and do everything. And also, See, you need to get it down into the, the joints and crevices and all these parts in here because you don't want the wash actually getting stuck, okay? So just make sure you get in a, a good old finish with it right the way through. And we're looking to have a sort of satiny gloss finish really to this one. Let's say it's going to take a couple of colour cups of these, have to wait half an hour, flip it over to the other side, so forth and so on until it's covered absolutely everywhere. But just make sure you go everywhere and importantly in all the little gaps and all these little details. Because say if you don't get it glossed up in there, it's going to end up getting stuck and because it's obviously going to be quite hard to get it out of these areas at the best of times. So we might have to do something like rinsing down stuff like that and this will protect everything by having it down there a clear coat put down first 